Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about sizing your solar system, specifically about off-grid. Unlike the grid-tight system, the off-grid system relies on the battery to store and use the power. So the off-grid system is made out of four parts, the solar panels, the charging controller, the batteries, and the inverter. The three major benefits that I see in off-grid system is the power outage, you will avoid that, the electricity bill will be lower, and it's actually easier than grid-tight systems. So let's begin. Sizing your solar system. We're going to make a table of the things that we want to run, the power, and for how long. So on the first column we have devices, in the second column we have power. On the third one, we have how long we want to run it for, so we're going to label that as time. And on the last column, we're going to have what hour, power and time multiply. Now, what devices do I want to run? For my example, I'm going to have three things. Lights. I'm also going to have some speakers. And a TV, a small TV. To find the power for your device, you can either look at the description, for example, for my lights, it says that it's about 18 watts, or you can also go behind of your device itself, there should be a power description for the speakers right here, I have 25 watts, or you can just Google it, that's probably easier. Now that we have the numbers we're going to write down 18 watts for the lights, 25 watts for the speaker, and about 60 watts for my 30 inch TV, small TV. After we have the number of the powers, we're going to look at the time. This is how long you want to run the device for. So for my lights, I just want to run it for 5 hours. And the speaker is going to be about three hours and the TV three hours as well. Once we have that, we're gonna multiply the second and third column. So 18 times five is gonna give us 90 watt. Well, 90 watt hours, 25 times 375 and 60 times 380. Now we're gonna add all these three up. So we get 345 watt hours. And if we want to go one full day of rain, we're going to have our system be able to handle that. So we multiply by two, we get about 690 watt hours. We can round this up to 700 watts. So we need a battery that can handle 700 watts. The average battery is about 12 volts. So for this scenario, let's say you have a 12 volts. So to get the amperage for your battery, we take the 700 watt hours that we got and we divide it by 12. So 700 watts divided by 12. So it's gonna be about 58.3 amp hours. We can round this up to 60 amp hours. Now, if we get an AGM battery, this means double due to the 50% discharge rate. But we'll talk about it later. Now, panels. The most efficient panel is the monocrystalline. It's monosilicon panel. It's more efficient, but it's also more expensive. So for our system, we're going to use the monocrystalline. So we need, so one panel produces 100 watts. And on average, the panel has about five hours of direct sunlight. So let's make a table. Let's uh, go on the right side. And put daily and five 
hours. And this also depends on where you are. Some areas get more sun hours, others get less. So we're gonna write here power. We're gonna multiply 100 watts times five hours. So this gives us 500 watt hours. Now our system requires 700 watt hours daily. So we're gonna need a second panel. So if we use two panels on a daily basis, we will get 500 watts times two, 1000 watts. Now we're gonna talk about charging controllers. There's two types, the MPPT and the PWM. The MPPT uh, is more expensive, but it's way more efficient. For example, if we have a solar panel of 18 volts, five amps, PWM will feed the battery only 14 volts and five amps. So as you can see, PWM has four volts being wasted. Now, if you use an MPPT, you still have 14 volts going to your battery, but you have 6.4 amps going to the battery. And this is because the MPPT has a DC to DC converter. So it's 20% more efficient than the PWM. So for our system, that you have two solar panels, about 10 amps going to the controller, a 30 amp charge controller. The MPPT is more expensive, but very beneficial when using it in bigger systems. So going back to our table, we're gonna write 30 amp MPPT charge controllers. Now the batteries. The two most common ones are the AGM and the lithium. Lithium would be the best option, but in our small system, we're gonna use the uh, cheaper option, which is AGM. Now remember that the AGM has a 50% discharge depth of discharge. So for 60 amp hour requirements, we gotta double that to 120 amp hours. If we were to use lithium batteries, we wouldn't worry so much about the depth of discharge because lithium can handle 80% up to 100%, but their price is expensive. So next, we're gonna need two 100 watts solar panels, like so. So far we have the 30 amp MPPT charge controller. We have a 120 amp power 12 volt AGM battery and two solar panels. The last thing we need is an inverter. So to find the right size, we add up all the devices that are gonna be run. So we have 103 watts that are gonna be running at the same time. So at least 103 watts. So I'm gonna get a 700 watt inverter. It's gonna give you room for other devices if I wanna add that in the future. And there you have it. This is the basic idea of sizing your solar system. Now I didn't talk about things like fuses, I didn't talk much about batteries or the controllers, or how to wire your solar panel. Thank you for watching and let me know what you think.